You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. We got an absolute great conversation about that because I think it's it's fascinating. Just each river has to be treated differently. It's a, it's, its own unique ecosystem. And I feel yeah. like, and I'm not in it as much as you guys are. I'm a fly on the wall, but what happened on the Shenandoah is different than the James, different than the new Roanoke. Everything is unique. And it's really hard for you guys because like, how do you allocate resources and time to fix all these, to yeah. fix all these things? Or what can you guys do to help? Right. Um, but guys, that'll be a conversation for another day. I have this guy pioneered and really helped reshape how we digest information about Virginia and especially about the waters that the DNR works with. Alex, please tell the people, if they don't know you already, who you are and what you do. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on, Thomas. It's great to be here at the um, Richmond Fishing Expo. Um, my name is Alex McCricker. I'm the Aquatic Education Coordinator with the Virginia Department of Wildlife Resources. Um, and yeah, basically, we, we try to bridge the gap between the science and management of our resources to the general public through an angling or a fishing lens. Um, and uh, that's, that's part of what we do from a, uh, an outreach perspective. Um, in addition to trying to build, really build a diverse network community of, of, of anglers in Virginia with underlying values of conservation and stewardship. So that's kind of the end goal. Um, and uh, we, we're going to get there through exposing people to the resources mm-hmm. and getting people excited about fishing in Virginia. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what's so important. And, and a little backstory on this, guys, is what he did was interesting is there wasn't a lot of there was a lot of literature on the different places that you could have access to the aquatic uh, resources we have in the Virginia area. And then all of a sudden I got on YouTube a couple of years ago and I see your face and you're promoting it. You went to one that I loved was like, I think I'm going to butcher this, Moomaw, going to Moomaw. Unless you're in this beautiful area, place. no one's heard of this thing. It is beautiful. And I believe Woods and Water said like a 22 pound stringer was caught out of there at some point. I could be lowballing Sleeper that. Sleeper smallmouth fishery. Exactly. Nice large mouth too. But if it wasn't for you, I, it's on a map, but it's writing words, guys. It's not. It's different than a picture. It's different than a video. I, we talked about this before we went live. Could you tell the audience the brainchild of how you guys developed this, this plan? Yeah. So basically, when the pandemic hit back in what March of 2020. Dang. Yeah. About three years ago. It's wow. Crazy. It's been almost three years. Um, basically, we stopped running in-person programming. Um, we didn't know a whole lot at the time. We stopped having major events, right? Everybody really shut down. So we stopped doing in-person programming, which is a key way to basically connect people to how to fish. So I'll, I'll, I'll do trainings where I basically follow the train the trainer model where we'll, I'll teach people to teach people how to fish. And then ultimately I I'll build like a network of angling instructors across the state. We partner with County Parks and Recs. We partner with DCR, our sister agency, State Parks, Department of Conservation and Recreation, oh, wow. agency volunteers. Um, and we're out running programs and trying to get people introduced to fishing. Um, and all that went to a halt. So we kind of had to figure out how do we reach people, um, you know, without doing it in person and really focusing on social media avenues, virtual avenues. The way our agency is set up um, We have an outreach division, which is the division that I'm in. Um, We have professional videographers on staff. We have photographers. We have website gurus. We've got marketers. We've got content managers. And basically, we have all these different avenues and the expertise within those avenues to get the message out there. And so we really wanted to try to find a way to shed light on the science and management of these various resources. and shed light on that and kind of bridge that gap to the general public with a bit of a fishing lens or a fishing focus. Um, and so my, luckily for me, my background, my formal training is actually as a fish biologist. Uh, I got my master's at um, Virginia Commonwealth University oh, wow. okay. um, and with a focus in that, um, but with a real knack for the outreach side of stuff and I've got a passion for fishing. Um, so I kind of blended all that together. Um, and really what we're trying to do is highlight various resources, um, basically bring in biologists that manage those resources. A lot of times we'll talk about habitat improvement projects, 
um, trends in the fishery, um, and basically how your license dollars are allowing us to manage these fisheries. And then, hey, how can we go out and target these different species of fish during different times of the year? And so that allows us to really shed light on walleye fisheries or musky mm -hmm. fisheries or trout fisheries. We can look at things in a species specific setting, or we can look at it by fishery or by season. So it's been kind of a lot of fun. We're trying to shed light on the diversity of what we've got in Virginia. I mean, where else do you have, where else can you live in the country where when we live, if you live in the central part of the state, Richmond, Charlottesville, you could drive an hour and a half to two hours one day and be on a high elevation mountain brook trout stream, cast some small dry flies for yeah. native brook trout. And then the very next day you could drive two hours the other direction and be casting the eel at a cobia or, or looking for trophy rockfish or puppy drum. I mean, and it's, and we have so many it, hidden gems too. And like, everything in between. I mean, you yeah. could, you know, I, we could highlight one department impoundment, one department lake a month, and it would take us years to go through all. Of them. Oh, There's, it's like even like uh, another one came to mind. You did Back Bay, yeah, and then I went on a deep dive about what that fishery's been through. It's and such it, a cool. Fish. You have so many. There's so many cool places that people don't know about, you and what spend, you yes. can spend a lifetime just fishing in the Greater Virginia Beach, Hampton Roads area, let alone the entire state of Virginia. And so there's so much to explore. Um, it's kind of hard to know where to start. So we're trying to kind of give people um, some kind of, you know, leads as to where to start. Um, and so we kind of highlight these different resources. And, you know, by species too. You know, maybe a lot of anglers might be used to fishing kind of warm water, largemouth bass, um, chain pickerel, red ear sunfish, channel catfish, but maybe they don't trout fish. Or maybe they've never fished for muskie. Or maybe they've never done a, a smallmouth float. And so kind of, trying to peak interest to kind of peel back those layers. And, and again, we're also trying to give people tips and tricks so that they're successful. Mm -hmm. We won't need to be successful out on the water and uh, to learn something new. And that's, that's one thing about fishing is you constantly are learning. Um, every day you're out on the water learning something new. And there's so much to explore, but yeah, that's kind of where the, the videos stem and we're still doing them now. We've got one coming out next month. That'll be in February of 2023. It's going to be all about sawguy, which is a hybrid species between a walleye and a sauger. We'll have the John Odenkirk. I did an interview with him. And Shout I know, out to that legend. <laughs> yeah, he's been on the, on the show before. And um, we'll be picking John's brain about the advantages of sawguy from a management perspective, why we stock sawguy in certain impoundments across the state. And, hey, how do you catch it? You know, um, so that we're looking forward to that one getting out. We just did a small piece on um, – winter fishing on Lake Anna. Oh, cool. So just kind of trying to raise awareness. Hey, even though it's the middle of January, you can still get out and wet a line and, and get tight on some fish. And then, and guys, we're going to, we're going to switch here and mention a different talk, but this is fascinating to me as a content creator. How do you plan these things out? Because I know you got, you got a team luckily to help yeah, you, but we're really lucky. It's, it's, it's a, it is a team effort. Oh, we, I can't we, imagine. Yeah. We work together and um, between across divisions with fisheries division, within outreach staff, uh, with law staff, we all try to put the pieces together and it is 100% a team effort. So for example, the, the one that you're gonna do with Odenkirk, yeah. how long did it take you to go from like, I wanna do one on Sagai and where we're gonna shoot it and how, right how long does that process take? Yeah, so basically what I try to do is I'll, I'll look at basically a 12 month calendar year. Okay. Um, and I try to think about topics by month, seasonally what makes sense. Um, and also, in relationship to our priorities from a fisheries division standpoint, what are we trying to push as an agency? What are we trying to raise awareness about? Gotcha. Saw guys a fish that we've only been stocking since 2013, so relatively new on the scene in Virginia. Six, so one, okay, yeah. one to Six kind years. of really think about shedding some light on. But basically, we'll look at things from a calendar perspective, and then basically, amongst everyone else's um, schedules within my division, we'll try to figure out what we can com accomplish on a, on a quarterly basis. Okay. Um, and then basically lay out a script ahead of time to kind of figure out how we're going to go about it. What you don't see is all the mess ups. And, well, and, and that's what I going to get to is like the people truly don't understand for me to put out like a 10 minute video on the Shenandoah. Yeah. They don't see all the other stuff in the hours behind it. Like for how we long do you great blooper reel? Oh my yeah, goodness. And it all depends. You know, sometimes we go out to, to film a piece, we get out on the water, you know, we're going through the process. We catch 
catch our target species and maybe a few of them mm-hmm. and we get it knocked down in one morning. Some days, you know, like we did a piece on Clater Lake and the walleye fishery down there, you, the unique New River native strain walleye fishery mm-hmm. last summer. And we went down to Clater and the fishing was tough. And we ended up spending two full days down oh, wow. there trying to get footage together. And so it doesn't always, and sometimes we go out and we don't catch fish. We did one on musky fishing. Didn't even catch a musky that day. Didn't even see one. Didn't get a follow. Um, but we still put the piece together. You know what I mean? And that's kind of a bit of a bit of musky fishing. You're not always successful. Um, it's all about the hunt. Um, but yeah, so basically, you know, we, it all kind of depends. But, um, you know, we'll try to get it knocked out within a day or two. A lot of times if we're traveling around, we'll film different bits and pieces and then go get interviews with certain fisheries yeah, managers smart. or resource experts. So. Um, a lot of times there's moving parts involved, um, but it's a great way to basically peel back the layers and give our constituents and the general public a little bit of a, a look behind the scenes as to kind of what we're doing. And it gives, it gives people a taste of what's out there. And this oh, yeah. is part of like, I think, I don't know if we talked about this live in the broadcast, but the three R's that we mentioned beforehand, yep. correct? Yeah, exactly. So, um, so we're the state fish and wildlife agency. And one thing that people don't always know, um, our agency is not a general tax fund agency. So we're solely funded off of the purchases of hunting and fishing licenses. And we do get some excise dollars, federal excise dollars um, from the sale of hunting and fishing equipment, right? Um, But we are basically faced with fluctuating um, populations of anglers and hunters. For hunters, we're faced with a steady decline um, in the numbers of people hunting. Fishing, actually, we saw an uptick over the pandemic, people getting mm-hmm. back out. Um, but state fish and wildlife agencies now are really embracing this R3 approach to outreach um, nationwide. And really, I think about it as a science-based approach to, to doing outreach. Um, the three R's stand for recruit, retain, reactivate. So from a fishing perspective, how do we recruit new anglers into the sport of fishing? How do we retain our current anglers, keep them interested in fishing? And how do we reactivate lapsed anglers? Maybe people that fished for five, seven, eight years and then stopped fishing. Um, and it's a lot of social science work. You know, we know more about our fisheries now than we ever have. Our science has evolved to the point where we've got a really firm understanding about our fisheries and how they interact. What's more challenging and more fascinating is understanding yeah. someone's motivation. That what is, motivates yeah. them to do something? What are their barriers? Um, and it, it's a lot of surveying, social science work. We're lucky to have um, a human dimensions team within our um, agency that we can work with to kind of try to do surveys and peel back these layers of the onion, so to speak. Was the social was the social science idea was that brought in during your tenure the last couple of years that you were there, or was that there before? That was there before. We've had okay. we've had a human dimensions coordinator for a while now. Um, but, uh, and I'm relatively new to the agency. I've only been here for about four years. Oh, wow. But R3 on the scene has been relatively new, like within the, fa- the past five to six years since we've had an R3 coordinator at our agency. And it's a relatively new movement or initiative in the state fish and wildlife world, so to speak. Um, but it's really a research-based approach. And what we're doing is we're surveying, we're measuring, right? We're trying to understand what drives someone to get out there. What mm-hmm. information do they need? So we're always, whenever we run programs in a non-pandemic setting, now we're back to running programs, we're always trying to gain information about the anglers that we're interacting with or the constituents that we're interacting with. And in the end of the day, we're trying to build conservation and stewards of the resource. And we can't get there without connecting people to the resource. And so building the sport of fishing and and getting more diverse constituents involved with fishing can only further our efforts to build conservation and stewardship at the state level and at, at a national level. And that's kind of what we're trying to do in the end of the day. Um, you know, you could, if you live in Richmond, but you don't recreate on the James River and you drive over on your way to work, but you never get out there, you might not care about it. Um, but if you get out there and, and you paddle it, Maybe you like tubing down it. Maybe you fish it. You enjoy that experience. You come back, you do it again. There comes this aha moment, I call it, in the fishing career where you realize the James River brings me a lot of happiness Mm -hmm. in my life. I need to care about this and look after it so that my children and my children's children have these same experiences. 
And that's what we're trying to build. We can't get there without connecting people to the resource. So. And I think what, what you bring up is like what anyone talks about in a good relationship, it's communication. And there is definitely a, a lack of communication. I there, In the past, there was but yeah. between, you know, anglers and people that enjoyed the resources and, you know, government agencies. An example of this, I get bereft of this every time I do a live stream talking about whatever. It's like, well, my tax dollars are not going to this and that. You just hit the nail on the head. Well, that's, that has nothing to do with this at all. And so you already have this disconnect of them thinking one thing that's not true. Right. And, and you guys are doing such a great job now bridging that gap because if we get communication between the private sector and the government, we can actually get things done. But we all got to be fighting. We're fighting for the bodies of water. We want them to be around for generations right. to come. We shouldn't be fighting against each other because the tribalism in fishing, it's like being a sports fan. It's insane. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. It, between a, If I have a show about cat fishermen, I have people that fish for bats in the comment section just saying <laughs> all crap. If it's the musky guys, the trout guys, it's guys like it's all the same body fish? of water. Do you fly fish? Do you conventional? It fish? is insane, and, and I, you have it in your comment sections too. I bet. Yeah, and I, <laughs> and I it's you know, and I, I do it all. I if I, I prefer to um, get a fish on the fly if I can. If that's if I'm going to be able to get them on the fly, I'm going to get them on the fly. But I am no no purist by any means. I will spin fish. I will fish with bait. I'll conventional fish. I'll troll. I like it all. At the end of the day, we're all trying to do the same thing. We just have different um, preferred methods of getting to the end goal, but we're all out there trying to catch a fish. Um, and we're all buying license dollars if we're yeah. fishing on public water. And we're all uh, investing in the conservation that is state fish and wildlife agency. So it is interesting. You do bring that up. And that's, that's not um, unique to... Uh, you know, fishing and hunting, like you said, you see it in sports. It's a human thing. Yeah, it's yeah. about being human. Yeah. And, and it's taking these lessons that we learned by watching sports and all these yeah. other assets that's gotten it right because they've had more years of experience. And we're just going to bring these lessons over to this segment yeah. here. Because yeah. I, I think if we, again, if we could figure out how to come together, we could really do better to maximize our resources and using them to to preserve this Fair for points. generations to come. That's um, it. Fair points, you know, um, promote, promote conservation of the resource. Um, and we're seeing more and more of that, though, you know, and, and it's, you know, it's just getting people to basically work together and to for the common good. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of that. And really, as a state fish and wildlife agency, we're not lobbying like, say, an environmental advocacy organization would. We oftentimes sort of present the science or the state presents the science. And then the basically the NGOs or the private sectors can then kind of take that room with it. Um, which is which is um, a lot of times what ends up happening, but um, but yeah, it's 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 definitely been fun so far, and I'm looking forward to trying to continue to spread the word. Well, I don't I don't want to take up excited about other opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, guys, I'm I'm really hoping uh, I'll have him on the show. We'll do a long form podcast hopefully in 2023. We can delve into this more. He's yeah. a busy man, and he's got a lot to do. So I'm going to let him go here. Is there anything in particular you'd like to plug uh, for the viewers at home, or anything that you'd like people to do? Well, hey, um, this festival is running for the rest of the day today and tomorrow. Come visit our booth. Um, it's a great chance to get our new fishing and boating regulations for 2023. Talk with a fish biologist. Talk with a conservation police officer. Um, inquire about regulations or questions about fisheries, certain equipment. We're here to, to help interact and, and, and answer answer the uh, questions from the public and get people excited about opportunities for 2023. So. And then what's the name of your YouTube? You're making sure guys, you got to follow his stuff. Is it, what's the name? Is it just so, Virginia? Yeah, if you just uh, on YouTube, just type in Virginia department of wildlife resources. It'll Perfect. come up on Instagram. We're um, at Virginia wildlife and then Facebook. We're just Virginia department of wildlife resources. All right. And we're the state fish and wildlife agency. So there you have it guys. So give them a we'll follow. Connect. We'll connect in uh, 2023 and Absolutely. Maybe delve into something fun. Yes, that would be fun. But guys, again, give them a like and then come on down to the Richmond Expo and you guys can see more. This broadcast is ending. I got four more interviews today, guys. I'll be kicking that up here in a minute. We'll see you next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.